It's Two on the Isle with me, Charles Gross, and Leslie Hoban Blake. Tonight, reviews of The King and I, The Tempest, Bombshell, and It's Shut Up and You. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Isle. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Doing? You, Leslie. It's summer. It is it's full summer. blast yes. summer. <laughs> we, we took our Tony break. Yeah. And now we're back, and there is some really nice stuff out there. Well, some of it, unfortunately, isn't even running right now. But yes, there's okay. some nice stuff out there. Well, let's talk about The King and I. This Which is, is running. Rogers and Hammerstein. It's running, and I suspect it's going to run for a long time at Lincoln Center. Uh, the Rogers and Hammerstein Classic, one of my personal favorites of the work, one of my old time favorite musicals. And. Kelly O'Hara, who seems to, uh, I think I think they must have an apartment for her at the theater at the Lincoln Center because she's <laughs> just there so often with it. As, uh, and I think of course, Rogers and Hammerstein are going to buy her a house. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's already bought them several, yeah, well, their children yeah. several, uh, or their grandchildren uh, several, I'm sure. Anyway, this is, of course, the story of Anna Leon Owens, who comes to Siam to be the teacher uh, of the king of, to the children of the King of Siam. Uh, songs like Getting to Know You, um, whistle, I, I Whistle a Happy Tune, uh, Is a Puzzlement. And this is an incredible production. The fir you notice this right off because you come in and you see there's an orchestra in the pit. It's actually in the theater. It's not in across the street. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. The score sounds incredible. Kelly O'Hara, who won a Tony for this, has never been better, and that is saying something. Um, plus, you have uh, hold on. We have Ken Watanabe. Well, you have who Gwen is a, Watanabe. Now that that gets to be the problem. That's well, we what didn't makes say that was a problem. It's more of a puzzlement, I think. <laughs> is 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 the is why he was chosen? And you look at him and you go, ah, he looks like a king right. should look. And he conveys. The and then he opens his mouth. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. He he definitely conveys the anguish and the puzzlement, the um, conflict that this king is mm -hmm. going through. You know, he's. Has he knows the old traditions, but he is trying to modernize his country. In he fact, thinks he is a modern man. That's and and he thinks he is a an intellectual, and he thinks he is a scientist, and all the things because he's read Western literature or right. as much of it as he can. And, and the interesting thing in real life, this king was oh, an yes. intellectual, and he he was an astronomer. Astronomer, excuse me. He he correctly predicted a, an eclipse in Siam. And interestingly, you know, they show when the. Prime Minister, the Krahalami, comes to meet Anna and her son. He's not wearing a shirt. And that, that interest, that was because in the court of the king, no one wore shirts be, so that they could not conceal a weapon. Well, but this king ended that, so it's a little ironic that they portrayed it. Well, in, in the, the thing show. is that it's based on yes. Anna Lowen Owen's book. I right. mean, she, this is her. Well, her biography. Her biography. And there was also an Irene Dunn movie of it without music right, called. With Rex Harrison. With Rex Harrison. And, 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 and much closer to the real story. I mean, this makes, uh, uh, brings in the. The, the Tup Tim story and the others that are not as important, but, but right. make for good songs. Right. And, uh, but again, the problem yeah. is yes. this king this who king. speaks and... Well, and he, sw he swallows his words. I directed the show. I know the lines. I had trouble knowing what he was saying. I mean, I really couldn't follow it. It wasn't that he swallowed them. He, he, he garbled them. It's not his fault. The man is Japanese, and he was not... There, there is a way of teaching someone to work... Uh, um, uh, what's the word? Phonetically. But... Obviously, he either didn't have the ear or nobody thought right. to teach him that and, way. And he can't sing. And the interest, the king only has one real song, yes. which in this production they've cut it's in a, half. It's, it's a song. Of, it's a and, song and it's, speak, and it's though. A, it's a song. But Yul even Brenner when, didn't sing. No, you know. no. But Yul Brenner could hit, could hit the hit, mark. Exactly. He cannot. That said, he still makes a very imposing king, and he has his moments. Certainly, My he, problem, certainly he can do the uh, shall we dance And I agree scene. with you totally about Kelly. If anything, this is the role she was born to play. Yes. Because the last once or twice, she hasn't hit. Since Nellie Forbush, for me, she hasn't quite hit the mark with Bridges of Madison County. I was no, not, she, right, she I was not, not with her. But here she was born to play this, and she's just luscious. And I, I, I like this better than South Pacific. And she's at a luscious place. But here's the problem, and mm -hmm. I adore Bart Chair, the director. I adore mm -hmm. the man, and I know how difficult a show this is to direct. Mm -hmm. Okay. He does a beautiful job, but yes. what it is is it's a pageant. It's dead. There's no heart to it. There's no warmth to it. There's no sex appeal to it. When he puts his hand on her, when Rule Brenner touched um, Constance Deborah, Carr, Deborah, Deborah, Deborah Carr Carr in the Deborah movie, Carr in the movie. Ugh, I got an electric shock. There wasn't any of that here. 
it, it, and, it, and I don't know where to put the, the blame because, it, and Bartlett has been doing opera and I think that's the problem. It's staged like an opera, big, big, big staging. When he died, I was sitting with, with a, another friend, a dramatist person, I won't say his name. Who he? I, I was sitting with another friend when the king dies. I, oh, I'm not okay. giving anything away to say the king dies at the okay. end. The king dies at the end, folks. That's the end of the story. Right. But, but, the, but, but the point that I was going to make is that my friend was going, when is he going to die already? When is he going to die? And he's, he was someone who loved the show as much as I do. Mm -hmm. The second act dragged. Mm -hmm. and, and the wonderful thing about the, the, the young boy coming forward to take over being king and all of the those things son. got mushed together. The, the king is lying on his bed and every, so much stuff is happening around him that I yeah. don't think anybody... I, it looked like he was going to sleep for a nap. I That's my agree take on that it. the um, romantic buzz between Anna and the king could have been stronger. And each of them is a sexy person but, individually. But I like this production. Okay. I had a wonderful time. I like uh, Ruthie Ann uh, Miles as the king's head wife, Lady Thiang. Excellent. I think she won a Tony for yes, that she role. Did. Uh, the staging of the small house of Uncle Thomas, the uh, ballet. This is based on the Jerry Romans co choreography recreated by Christopher Gottlieb. Jerome Robbins, yes. Jerome Robbins. Did I say Jerry? You, you said a whole other name. It's okay. <laughs> it's right. um, fabulous, really. And I had a wonderful time at this production. It and I, I recommend it. Yeah. Uh, I would have given it five playbills, except that, you know, I think you have to subtract because you can't hear the king. So I am going to give well, it four and a half. And I, and I do recommend and it. And I, with great sorrow, am going to give it a 3.75. I can't go higher Before than that. Before we go, we do have some scenes from the show. We, we can, do. We can't go. We so do. And they're going to look lovely. <laughs> Welcome to Siam. Okay, next. Well, I'm coming up with something that Charlie didn't see. No, and, and, and Charlie nobody wanted the, to see it. Most but... of the drama desk did not see it because I bought a ticket to it. <laughs> this was a, 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 a benefit. No, no, but it was a benefit. Okay, it charity. wasn't, there, okay. it was a charity benefit. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying anything about anybody. And I, I was very lucky. I had to be on a waiting list to get my ticket. I waited two weeks to know whether I was going to even get it. So at the drama desk awards, I happened to be talking to Chris Borla and, and I said, I don't know if I'm going to make the show. He said, you better be there. And I went, okay, I'll try. Anyway, so I got to be there. you want to tell us about the show? It's, well, all right, for anybody who watched, watched Smash, this is the show they were, it was, they were making in, in, right. in Smash. It's and bomb they didn't, in, bombshell. And it's the story of Marilyn Monroe. And I don't know whether we're going to get any of these pictures to be seen, but these are the stills from, from and, and these are from the television show, not from the production. Right. Because what happened here, it's a one-night-only show. And so there was no production. It literally was a concert. Mm -hmm. Everybody came out one at a time. Everybody got immense applause for their particular. People in the audience were fans of the television show. Uh, the woman sitting next to me probably had seen five plays in her life. She loved the television show. We had a long chat because there was an intermission. And people were by. It was about the merch on this. I so so. Did they actually do a show called Bombshell? Was did there a the, book? Was there a story? No, 
No. no. What they did was wonderful pictures of Marilyn's life that were fo that were just shown without any a little card came out. Everybody would come out and read a small card. And then Marilyn went to Hollywood. And then, you know, billions of pictures of Marilyn. Um, it was uh, uh, Mark Shaman, uh, Matt, Mark Shaman, right? Yes, Mark Shaman uh, and, and Scott Whitman were there. Uh, I, Mark was playing the piano on some of the songs. The, the team that did the music. The team that did the music, the cast. Uh, was it was the cast of the television show with one exception Bernadette Peters wasn't there and as you said Donna McKechnie took her place mm -hmm. and 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 the cast um, is the cast uh, the, I mean everybody was there Christian Borla um, well who was he he I mean he played the composer Christian in the show, Borla so played was... the composer uh, it's written by Teresa Rebick Megan Hilty was the gal who played Marilyn she was but one the of... other Marilyn uh, the, the one who is Norma Jean um, is uh, Catherine McPhee. Oh, so, that, so, they, so that's how they split that's it? That's how they split it. Oh, you never watched the show. Of course I did. Well, the, you did, that was the whole point of the show. So they split it the same way in this. Then. Well, they, they never actually split it in the show. First they did. one was playing well, it, then the okay. other was playing but, it. But they also, there were Norma Jean segments with, with Catherine McPhee, and there were Marilyn, and, and Megan Hilty was born to play a character like Marilyn. I mean, well, she she's just, got uh, she did, I think, at Encore, she did... Um, Gentlemen from yes. Blondes, yes. But anyway, so, so the point here is that if, <laughs> and, then, and then there's the concert. Well, you know, I don't know the songs from this. We got, we got to see them once uh, per television episode. So it's not as if they're, I know the songs. Um, and it's, it was such an odd thing. It was such a letdown. After the thrill of I finally got a ticket and oh, we're all here and the, the house was packed. I got the last seat in the last row. I am not kidding you. Um, and... And then it was one song after another, and I could read you the names. So it was of the really songs. the song. No, it was it was it the was songs a concert. That we, it was the songs that we heard. Yep. On the TV show. Let me be your star, which was okay, the theme right. song, right? And then it goes um, at your feet. Don't know that one. Twentieth Century Mambo. I remember, I remember that. that. Uh, Never give your heart. And it, it National was, Pastime was mm -hmm. when she met Joe DiMaggio. Right. But in other words, it went Act One, Act Two, and it's all of those. And I'm sorry, I'm just fixing my tooth because it came out okay. earlier today. So. <laughs> Anyway, so that was it. It was it was right. for what it was. It was fun for fans. It was mm -hmm. it was like Comic Con, is okay. You know, for but it was right. for a broad for, for, for a broad. television okay. show. Well, so the the show I saw, I yes, didn't pay that I haven't take, seen I, yet. That you haven't. This is the Tempest, at uh, part yes, of the, the free uh, show. Yes, Shakespeare in the Park. <laughs> yes, no one pays for this for <laughs> this know. play, uh, which is one of the reasons it is so hard to get a ticket. Yeah. People wait all day uh. to get it. Uh, is it worth it? Well. Not as much as it was for some of the more recent oh. shows, like the Comedy of Errors, oh. uh, that they've had. The thing is, this is not a bad production, but it certainly pales in beside some of the recent entries that they've had at the park. Uh, you have Sam Waterston. He plays uh, Prospero, who is a banished duke. He lost his dukedom. He's been living on this island, but he's a sorcerer, a magician, and he's got this spirit working for him. And now he's man. He is about to extract revenge on the people who uh, overthrew him. And the star of this show is- And he lives with his daughter. And he lives with his daughter, yes, uh, who is, um, let's see, very blandly played by our friend uh, Cheska uh, Carpani. We're not gonna talk too much about her. Okay. Yeah, her daughter meets a nice guy who's- But it's, Miranda who's, who's, is you know, wonderful, a wonderful part of the story, but she should be. She's, well, not She here. should be, okay, right, I here, got you. Here that part kind of gets whitewashed wa away. Uh, the, the actors playing these roles are very bland. I don't think the director really is all that interested. And the director was? In, interested in them. And the director was, is, uh, let's see, good question. Um, Sorry, I didn't Michael, see Michael uh, Griff. Michael Griff? Yeah, Griff. Who did Rent? Yes. I mean, it's a, certainly a fabulous director. He well, did Spring he, Awakening. Uh, the stage, uh, you have some very nice, very elaborate staging. Yeah. You have the star, the star of the show here, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, Chris... Uh, Perfetti as Ariel, who's the spirit. Ah. He has been described as having an old soul, and he does. So he has very low key, very downbeat, but still quite ever so slightly mischievous and gets the job done and really is a standout, as is Jesse Tyler uh, Ferguson, Ferguson, who's probably yeah. best known for Modern Family now, uh, but this is not his first appearance in the park. Comedy he of Errors, <laughs> you just mentioned. Exactly, yeah. right. He plays the gesture. The, these are the two standouts. Stefano or Tricula? Which uh, one? He is Tricula. And you know he's the jester because he's got a jester. Oh, he actually wears the jester He cap. wears oh. the cap. All right. Um, it was an enjoyable production. I wasn't overly enamored with Sam Waterston. I think um, Patrick Stewart did the role better. 
but I like this production better than the Stewart production. Mm -hmm. I would give it between two and a half and three playbills. I mean, look, the price is certainly right, right. but again, we've seen. Much I must better. say, though, it, it just not having seen that, Sam Waterston yes. has done Hamlet for the public, he's done King Lear for the public. Mm -hmm. um, he did one other. He uh, was in Much Ado over, no, uh, over Nothing a few, a few years well, ago. Well, he was he was in the Much Ado about Nothing in the '60s. No, I'm talking that, about the, the more recent one. No, but he but he yes. was in the in the one in the '60s. Well, I think he did the Tempest too, if, uh, like 30 years ago. I think he would have been much too young unless he played and, one of the, unless he played Ferdinand. No, no, I think he was Prosper. Okay. Okay. If you say so. I, I do. All right. So am I? Am I up? Am you're, I? Are we, you're up, okay. lady. I have a show that, unfortunately or not unfortunately, has closed, and the show is called "It Should Have Been You," um, and it should have been something else. It was. It's a strange little show. Uh, it won it so hard. To, it, it it was really like the little engine that couldn't, and I don't know why it, it wound up being so not good. Because it had Tyne Daly, it was directed by David. As a stereotypical David. Jewish mother. Yes. Well, yeah. maybe it's the stereotypical, and maybe you have the answer right there, because she's the stereotypical Jewish mother, and Harriet Harris is the st stereotypical non-Jewish mother, and Stereotyp Lisa Boston. Harris is is the Lisa Howard rather is the stereotypical daughter, and Sierra Bogers is the is the stereotypical. Bride. Girlfriend, bride. No, she, she was the bride. The other, she uh, was the old, the, the other one was the older. Lisa sister. Howard was the daughter of the, the, yes. the older daughter, the, the who didn't slightly get married, overweight right. daughter who's not getting married. Yes, and 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 everything about it, uh, written Ever, by as as written, written by things. Brian Hargrove and Barbara Anselmi. Mm -hmm. Everything about it was stereotypical, except. And now that the show is over, can I give away the, the, the big reveal? Is that okay? Yes. G give me the, the big Broadway reveal. gay cliché. Yes. And that's exactly what it was, the Broadway gay cliché. Very nicely put. Um, the husband of um, Neil Patrick Harris, and that's not how he wants to be known, obviously, whose name is David Berkta. I just wanted to read it correctly because right. there's a T and a K he there, and I get them in the wrong the... place. Plays the, the, so, the putative groom who actually is gay and... Well, the bride is also gay. Well, so that, I mean, that's the whole point. So the bride has a girlfriend and the groom has a boyfriend and, and, and somebody's, one of the mothers is very happy because she always wanted her son to marry a doctor or her daughter to marry a doctor. I don't remember which one it was because at that point I groaned and just went slunk well, down the, in the my seat. Well, the thing is here, this is the third time this season Yes. That we've had this cliche, and it worked beautifully in Sideshow. Yes, where you had it, where you know, which takes place before being gay was okay, yeah. and it added a before being gay was okay. Being gay was always okay. <laughs> That's a very not, strange not by society. Thing. I'm well, sorry. acceptable. Let's put it well. And, and but, okay but that, is a that was why he, you know that was why someone who was going, wanted to marry one of the twins could not, and it added a very he was kind of a, a freak in his own right, right. sort so of speak. Right. And then they hinted at it with an American but stay, in Paris. Staying with this, staying with this. Well, no, they didn't hint at it. I'd rather go it. back it was, to sideshow. It was. I'd rather go back to American in Paris. It was. It was very blatant in American in Paris, and and a but very, never actually acknowledged. No, but a very, hinted at. But a very strong focal point. It was a good. It was a. It was used correctly there. It, it made sense in the larger sense of why people were doing things, right. as opposed to, the the fact that this was pushed into this play to give it something. Yes, and the big deal here was Howard, um, uh, Lisa Howard, who has a voice like, as she says, a big black woman. Um, uh, she was singing what, what they call the big black woman number in the show. She was just amazing. I yes. believe she certainly won a Drama Desk Award. She, um, but in any case, I don't think she uh, David Hyde Pierce's direction was, you know, it was, a, it was directed as a farce. A lot of running around back and forth and a lot of doors. You count the doors, mm -hmm. there are six doors. As a director, I look at how many doors, oh, it's a farce, right? But it wasn't. 
it didn't have the pace that a farce needs. People are, you know, we're not, if you remember that wonderful James uh, Con Condon uh, show that came, uh, a Servant and Two Masters, that was a farce, up, down, falling, this kind One of thing. One Man, Two Governors. One Man, Two Governors, what did I call it? Oh, I didn't remember the title. Okay, anyway, the point okay. being. We, we're low on time. Yes, and we well, do want to, we're going to leave, leave with some scenes from this if we, if, do we have? Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah. All right, so we're going to close with that, <laughs> but what's, what's your conclusion on the show? Well, in terms of uh, points, playbills, to. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I concur. I'd like to squeeze more out of it. But. I concur. I, I, I like I like the big sister. She was good. Yeah. Uh, but the the it got a little too cliche-ish. It should have been good. And <laughs> it was a little too, and just too stereotypical. I wasn't offended by it. I was just bored by it. Yeah. Well. And so, and that is our show for the evening. So when you go to the theater, look for Leslie and me. Us too. On the aisle. On the aisle. Hello, Marty. What'd I do? My daughter breaks your heart and you don't have the decency to call me. I'm sorry. It should have been you. And would have been you. If she'd only had the common sense to take my word that you were it I told her he's always been around you Might as well make him legit Once you find a decent fit, you keep him on It should have been you Instead of this John Brian He's got a tattoo Do you have a tattoo, Marty? No it should have been you. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Your mother and I had words, but I didn't get to use any of mine. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just gonna be my usual self. No! no! Mother, please be nice. When have I ever not been nice? You might think you're being nice, but it doesn't always come across that way. Everything I say is out of love. But you sound angry. Sometimes love is angry. <laughs> I like nice. Nice is sweet. Is suspending your ethics to beat fancy pants at her own game. Oh boy, am I for clipped. It's better than I ever dreamt. <laughs> Playing nice. Oh, please, you're just saying that. But it's true. It's like your whole face has been lifted. <laughs> that about? You're the one who hooked him up with the therapist. Well, she's a very good therapist. She's helped me with my drinking. <laughs> Even try to turn him gay. Bought him Barbie and Skipper and Dawn Let him know it was okay And we played dress up with eye makeup on I took him to everything sometime Those halcyon days are all gone He looks so cute in that sarong Would that have been so wrong How could he take on a wife? I am that girl and here's a life Did that sound a little strong? <laughs> <laughs>